Alabama by the skin of their teeth and by yep. what everyone is terming the Milrow miracle. Yep. Downs Auburn on the Plains 27-24. Holy crap, guys. This, this was one of the most electric finishes to a college football game that I can remember in quite some time. There were so many times that we thought Alabama was dead on arrival. Auburn had put them away, and yet on fourth and goal from the 31-yard line, Jalen Milrow finds a receiver in the corner of the end zone. Mm -hmm. Miraculous catch, and it flips the game completely on its head. And then that doesn't even get into the total chaos that ensued after that, the, the ensuing kickoff and the pick six at the end of the game, but just a total chaotic ending to this year's Iron Bowl. And it was in Jordan Hare, so of course it was going to be a chaotic ending, right? <laughs> oh, there was never a doubt. There was never a doubt it was going to be chaotic. Uh, fourth and 31, as you mentioned. Um, I, I would just like to say, um, you know, I don't know who tweeted it first. We were we were tweeting Milro Miracle uh, as it happened. So I would like, you know, co-author credit co on that. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I think I think the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta should uh, should list us on that plaque. Um, I mean, what a, what a job by Nick Saban in Alabama. I mean, you guys were texting me as we were finishing up, uh, our playoff game. So I was reading through texts as I was pulling that up. And I mean, from the way that y'all were talking about it, it looked like Alabama was dead, uh, that, that Auburn was gonna, Oh, they looked pretty dead for a second there. Yeah. That Auburn, if they didn't win by, you know, one was going to win by, uh, at least a full score. I think the punt, the muffed punt was the absolute game changer. Um, you know, <laughs> gosh, like you got to feel for that Auburn kid just slipping. Didn't didn't like muff it traditionally, just slipped. And I don't know if it was raining there or not, but um, Alabama then able to, you know, at least threaten. Uh, and Trey, as you texted me, oh, gosh, Alabama's melting down. And, and to get in that fourth and 31 and create another chapter in this Historic rivalry. It's just um, just incredible. Saban finds a way to win, and uh, you got to tip your cap. Well, and that melting down was Auburn or Alabama, excuse me, driving down inside the 10, of course. The center snaps it over Milrow's head right past him. He's not ready for the snap. That sets him up backwards. Then on the very next play, Jalen Milrow scrambling, throws the ball after he's already crossed the line of scrimmage. Just looked like, yep. you know, stuff you never see from a Nick Saban coach team when the game is on the line. And yet there they were fourth and 31 Isaiah bond comes up huge with the reception in the back of the end zone. And, you know, I, I joked it's survivalry week and that's exactly what Alabama did, right? They kept their slim playoff hopes alive. Auburn wanted nothing more than to ruin the season and just send Alabama mm -hmm. home. I guess they would still get to go to Atlanta regardless next week, but you know, make that game pretty much meaningless for the Crimson Tide if Auburn wins this one. And Auburn ran the ball really, really well. 244 yeah. yards on the ground, only 93 through the air. They didn't really need that. Um, and, you know, it felt like Auburn was right there. They they had a couple miscues that a 6-6 six and six team is going to have with a more talented team. And that's what held them back from finally getting this one done at the end. So, you know, hats off to Auburn for competing, especially after what they went through last week. And I think Hugh Freeze can draw some positives from this. But, you know, the end of this game has to just be absolutely heartbreaking for Auburn and their fan base. Well, and Trey, it's the miscues none more than the fact that they sent out their backup punt returner. And he was the guy who muffed that punt. Oh, he wasn't even supposed to be on the field. I don't know, like, if it was just they couldn't find the regular guy or – Maybe he didn't have his, you know, shoelace tied or something. I mean, any number of things as to why he wasn't on the field. But that's he's crazy. Sending your backup punt returner, he's the guy who muffs it. And only because I, I believe it's only because he called for a fair catch was why they stopped the ball dead there. They might have preferred if Bama just walked that one in so they get the ball back. And I mean, man, like it, that was that was brutal. And, and I do want to pull this one to a, a quick comment here. Go watch the Auburn D line last play. Rushing two, spying one. They had a spy yeah. on fourth and goal from the 30. Yeah, yeah. what what Don't worry, guys. If he takes off, we've got 31 yards to they, react to it. They ran nine Velcro with a spy, uh, which is just, just unfathomably I, stupid. I don't, yeah, it's uh, and well, 
and the other issue too so when i look at this uh, like as a whole i still don't think that like watching this game bamba i don't think has what it takes to win the whole thing i don't think they'll be able to beat georgia but i want to go hats off to milrow on this one because milrow just for some reason this year keeps willing his team to win he keeps pushing him over the top he's an absolute warrior he's finding ways to win and we have been critical of his arm talent and his ability to throw that pass to the back of the end zone was a dime. That's about as perfect as a pass can get. Look, at the end of the day, you got to go hats off to him. And there were mistakes on the Auburn side, but, you know, 99 other quarterbacks in college football throw that thing out the back of the end zone or it gets picked. And Milrow made a great pass to pull that one off. Trey, can we talk about real quick just how crazy this rivalry always is? Uh, and I think exhibit a your honor is the fact that you looked at the 93 passing yards in the Auburn stat sheet and said, yeah, they didn't really need those today. Nope. And yet they were one to two, just terrible defensive plays away from knocking off the crimson tide. Like that is rivalry week in a nutshell. Yeah. And it, it seemed like, you know, anytime, Alabama, and this is going back to Garrett's Jalen Milrow comments, like anytime they needed the big third down pickup down the stretch, they were getting it when that comeback yeah. was on. And they melted, Alabama melted down a couple times as they were entering scoring position too down the stretch. But, you know, the clutch factor and Nick Saban just coming up, you know, it's a well coached team. He said it in the interview hey, we practice that, right? We practice, we practice, you know, situations like this all the time. It's a well coached team that's going to come up big in big yeah. situations and, you know, credit to both of these coaches for giving us just a fantastic, uh, fantastic game. Because it, like I said earlier, it would have been really easy for Auburn to just fall over after they fall down early uh, after the debacle against New Mexico state last week, no one would have blamed you for uh, getting up for this one at the beginning. And then after you fall down, just, you know, falling over, but, you know, great game, fantastic example of what rivalry week can uh, bring. And, you know, Alabama now has a lot of questions to answer as they go into Georgia next week. Uh, one, one quick thing before we wrap this up, and it's kind of a going into the offseason for Auburn. Obviously, I think we all know Auburn's going to get better. I think what they showed this year, they're going to be able to, you know, play the portal pretty well and get some guys in there. One thing that I highlighted in our notes Auburn's got to figure out the quarterback position. You cannot have a run-only quarterback. They passed for 93 yards today, and you're not going to win very many games, especially not against Alabama with 93 yards passing. That, I think, is going to be one of the bigger offseason storylines is figuring out who's going to be the signal caller in Auburn um, and, and kind of figuring out who they're going to put back there because that could change a lot of things next year with you know new conferences and and. You know, everybody else that's coming in, they still should be playing Alabama and Georgia. And again, those being two of the top teams, if they get a better signal caller, they played both of these teams extremely close and a better signal caller, a better passing ability, anything in the past game, just a pulse probably brings them over the top. Gracious. Yep. How about that?